right, so here we are with the Scarlet 2i2, first gen. Um, I got this one back in 2013. And we're going to look at a. We've done. A, I've done an. Uh, not an unboxing, but I've done a review of this and I've done a setup video. And now I want to talk a little bit about connections because that's what life is about, right? Making connections, meaningful ones. So the Scarlet 2i2 has these. Um, it's called a 2i2 because it's two in, two out. If you want uh, more details, of course, you can look at the uh, setup video and the review video. And some people like to record. I, I like to record using MIDI, but some people like to record audio because, well, for one thing, it's a little bit easier uh, depending on how, how your workflow is and sometimes the sounds you have on your keyboard just aren't in any VSTs. And so um, this is one way to record. So we're going to look at a couple different ways. Now these are these are what you I call them hybrid connections. I'm not sure that's the official name, but basically this is a cross between an XLR and a quarter inch. So you're probably wondering what the difference is. Let's uh, take a quick look at that. So for my demonstration here, or illustration, or whatever you want to call it, I've chosen the most typical balance cables. Uh, the very most typical one is XLR. You can see the three pins in there. And uh, I was not quite sure what uh, balanced, because these are your balanced connections. Here's a TRS is also balanced. And I knew what it meant, but I had to look it up real quick, so bear with me. So I mentioned that uh, this one has three pins, and one is, um, I think one is ground and one is shield and something else. Anyway, this is also balanced because it has the three, the tip, the ring, and the sleeve, as opposed to unbalanced, which is just the tip and the sleeve. Now, the reason for balanced connections and sound, what they enable you to do is use um, a very long length of cable. For example, now this one I think is about 10 feet. And uh, this one is 25 feet, but you could as easily have a 50 foot um, XLR cable. And it allows you to do that because it's balanced without uh, getting a lot of external external noise. They're not as susceptible to external noise. And so has the three connections like I mentioned. This is XLR, TRS, and the inputs on the Scarlet are balanced. Alright, so before I look at connecting a keyboard and microphone to the Scarlet, I thought I'd take a quick look at where these types of connections actually came from. Um, they did not originate with the digital audio interface. They actually came from analog consoles. So this in front of me is an analog console uh, with all these knobs and yes I do know what they all do. Um, but the the connections originated here. So we have right here or maybe I should go right here you can see a little better. Um, this is an XLR input as it looks on an analog console and this here is a TRS quarter <coughs> excuse me a TRS quarter inch input. So. So once again, we have our, our uh, TRS quarter inch cable, and we can plug that in there. Now these other things are inserts, and that's for if you have outboard gear. That's a whole other topic. But uh, there we have our quarter inch, and then and here we have an XLR, which I will just plug in. You remember this three pin, plug in here. Okay, and so that's where these type of connections came from, which is why on the Scarlet we have where you can plug in a quarter inch right into the middle of that XLR. It's called a combo jack, which I think was a uh, whoever invented that. Thumbs up. Okay, so on the Scarlet, as far as I know, these are balanced. Well, of course, the XLRs are balanced, and I believe the... Uh, um, the hybrid or the combo is what they actually call it. The combo part of it, the TRS part, is also balanced. And we're going to take this end of the XLR cable, all right, with three pins. This is the uh, the male end. It's kind of shielded by this. That is so that 
the reason there's um, this edge over here to where you know the prongs aren't sticking out like they would on most male connections like they do on the uh, on the TRS um, I believe that's so you don't make a connection across these three pins and uh, electrocute yourself so <laughs> if there were power there isn't power running through it right now but anyway I digress plug this in to one okay that's how you plug in a microphone and at the same time you can take the nice TRS balanced and you can plug it in here okay and that you can plug into any number of things a keyboard a, a guitar um, I once did a, a direct in with a, a bass guitar. I believe there was a preamp in front of it though, so that may have had something to do with the sound, but it came out pretty pretty good, clean recording. But now speakers is another question because some people do not have the, uh, the connections on the back with the... Uh, let's put this. Some of you don't have the uh, uh, speaker studio monitors, which is what this would plug into with, again, a TRS connection would plug in like this. And, uh, and then you would have your speaker out. I just plugged it into the left. Okay. So now these on, this is the first gen because these are, if I turn it sideways, you can see that they stick out and uh, on the second gen they are flush and even with this okay alright so how do you plug in speakers that are regular and not studio monitors let's take a look at that